Inside Glaive Hunters, welcome back. Hope you all are enjoying Rise. I have been having an absolute blast with this game. I wanted to do a quick rundown of the Kinsex in this game since we have a few new ones and in particular with the Switch skills, there are a lot of different combinations that you can put together with these. And honestly, each one is going to depend on the monster that you're going up against. So you might need to switch out your Switch skills and your Kinsex depending on the monster that you fight. Fast monsters versus large hitboxes versus tanky monsters, etc, etc. So I'm going to suggest some ideal pairs and for which situations these are best going to be fitting. We'll go through each Kinsek type at a time, so if you're looking for a specific one, check the timestamps. Alright, just before we get started, if you are new to Monster Hunter or to Insect Glaive in general, Kinsex are your little insect buddy that you use to gain extracts which buff your abilities. Alongside this, Kinsex also do damage to the monster, so in this video, we'll be focusing on the Kinsex changes, particularly for Rise. If you want a guide on how to use Kinsex, it'll be upcoming in my full Insect Glaive tutorial for Rise. Starting off with one of the coolest Kinsex, I think, is the Kinsex Assist. Now, this works by adding extra damage to your final attack of your light combo or all your heavy attacks. It also does damage with the Diving Wyvern Silk Bind move. Now to activate this Kinsect, you need all three Kinsect bugs to be active and then it just needs to sit on your arm. This means you don't need to send your Kinsect out, you don't need to mark the monster, just simply get the buffs and focus on your DPS. The damage will come automatically. Additionally, Kinsects come with a Kinsect bonus. Now for these Kinsects specifically, they come with dual colors, which is essentially similar to what we had in World. When your Kinsect was charged, you could pick up two colors. In Rise, they've actually simplified this process and made it so that each Kinsect is designated a certain buff to always pick up, regardless of where you hit the monster. The second color is just like a regular Kinsect extract. Wherever you hit the target, you get the color from that body part. A quick reminder here as well that generally the head gives you the red buff, the body gives you the orange or sometimes the, the chest, and then the legs and tail sometimes give the white. So essentially in combat, this requires you to send your Kinsect out only twice, in order to get all three buffs. This is a pretty big time save in my opinion and a great change for Inside Glaive users. Okay, let's take a look at some of the switch skills here. In my opinion, after doing some testing here, if you want the highest DPS, you should be using a Leaping Slash, Tetra Seal, and the Diving Weaver and switch skills. The Leaping is fairly accurate and is close to the monster, so your Kinsect will be guaranteed to hit the part that you're attacking. The Tetra Seal is a multi-hit attack and it's actually they're all considered heavy hits so the Kinsect will do multiple hits along with your attacks as long as you don't get interrupted. Additionally to that as well, the final Tetra Seal attack has a higher emotional value compared to the Tornado Slash which is what the Kinsect damage seems to be scaled accordingly to. The unfortunate issue with the Tornado Slash that I've seen is that you have less hits so you can technically do the combo more often but you still lose the same amount of Kinsect stamina. So in the end, the Kinsect will not follow up on future combos and it'll have to recharge. Either way, most encounters anyway, you only have time for one full DPS before you have to dodge or reposition. So the Tetra Seal will output more damage in a single combo. The only time I've thought that this may differ is on a knock. But also given that it's a knock, most times, at least for the veterans you guys will know, you don't really use the Tornado Slash until the final hit when you're attacking a knock monster. Instead, you'll double back and reel into your light attacks and then go back into your heavy attacks. So overall, the assist type Kinsex are very comfy for passive damage without worrying too much about the Kinsex status and marking the monster. If you are new to Monster Hunter in general, I think this is a very good Kinsex for you to start off with. Don't even bother with the Tetra Seal, just use the regular Tornado Slash and start to learn how the Kinsex does some extra damage and get used to your attacks. It's just extra bonus damage for you while you're still learning the Insect Glaive. If you do use the Tetra Seal, it's best to pair that with monsters that are either you either know really well and you can time the attack perfectly, or use it on slower monsters. Fast monsters like Toby and Nargakuga, they're going to be a pain with the Tetra Seal because you're not going to be able to get it off as often. If you are looking for an ideal combo to use for full DPS, I would recommend doing a heavy attack, Tetra Seal or Tornado, follow up with a roll and then go straight into a strong rising slash, and then jump right back into your final heavy Tetra Seal or Tornado Slash. If you do this, the Rising Slash will give you enough time for your Kinsect to recharge just a bit, and then you'll be able to use that full Kinsect and use the rest of the Stamina Bar to get enough damage. The last thing I'll note here, the Advancing Slash is a switch skill that replaces the Leaping Slash. This one is kind of rough to pair with the Assist Kinsects, primarily because the Kinsect also starts attacking when you start this attack. So if you're using this move to get close to a monster, your Kinsect is going to miss the first few attacks. It's certainly not impossible to use. I think if you're really skilled, maybe you can time it really well. 
but keep in mind that the advancing slash also moves you forward. So as you move forward, your Kinsect is also going to start hitting different parts of the body. So just keep that in mind. If you're using the advancing slash, it may be a little bit difficult to be precise with and you'll lose some damage to the Kinsect stamina any time you use it as a means to get closer to a monster. Okay, let's move on to the speed Kinsects and these ones have a neat ability. What they do is that they have a charge that while they are stored and tucked away on your arm, they deal bonus damage on the first hit when they're released. Now the indicator for this is that if you look at the end of your glaive, there is a blue light that's going to shine. When that blue light is active, it means the next Kinsect attack on the monster is going to deal high damage. After that, it goes red and then you'll have to bring your Kinsect back and let it recharge. These speed Kinsects are quite interesting and in Rise, they actually can be used with a new feature that was pointed out by Paradise Central. I'll link his video down below, but essentially it's a new trick that you can use that if you're doing any heavy final hit, you can cancel that large animation at the end by doing a Kinsect recall, which will then bring your Kinsect back to you. I thought this was pretty cool and honestly it ties really well with the speed Kinsects. So just let me explain it a little bit further here. Speed Kinsects do high damage on their first hit, so when you launch them at the monster. So essentially, your gameplay style will look like sending your Kinsect out at the start to hit the monster while you jump into your combo, end your combo off with a heavy hit like the Tetra Seal or the Tornado Slash, and use the Kinsect Recall to cancel that animation, and then jump right back in to launch your Kinsect again and do some more DPS if you have time, or if not, dodge and reposition and then start all over. Alright, let's talk about the bonuses that come with these speedy boys, and then we'll talk about the skills to use. Speed Kinsects actually come with three different bonuses. So the first one is the fast charge. It's about a half a second faster to charge that blue state. So it's roughly four seconds to recharge. I'm not entirely sure if this is really useful as, well, it is great damage, but practically you aren't going to be focusing on the damage every five seconds anyway, so by the time you finish your combo, it should be charged and you'll be sending your Kinsect out to do extra damage, so I don't particularly think the fast shards are useful unless there's something I'm missing. If you guys know anything else, please let me know in the comments below. The triple uptime is the second bonus, which is kind of neat and it's kind of like a boosted power prolonger. For those of you that are new to Monster Hunter, power prolonger is a decoration buff that extends the time of your Kinsect buffs. So overall, when I did the math on this, without any power prolonger, you get about 20% extra time on your Kinsect buffs. So that's going to last you from 130 to 148-ish seconds, 150-ish. If you do have Power Prolonger at level 3, you get up to 25%. And that's based on the Power Prolonger scaling per level. So if you're going between 1 to 3, just note by 3, you will have 25% extra time. So your buffs should last about 2 minutes and 30 seconds compared to the regular 2 minutes without this triple uptime. It's a neat feature. I don't think it's entirely worth a Kinsec bonus. That being said, if you are looking for a little bit more comfy runs, this is going to save you our 2 or 3 recharge cycles by the end of the hunt. Finally, for the speedy boys, this is actually my favorite one, the Charge Chain Attack. It has very nice damage. On a blunt Kinsect, this thing shines to make openings for you. A lot of times, your damage on combos may be just below that threshold to get a break or a knock. This Kinsect adds that extra damage and you can get some knocks and uh, breaks very quickly in a hunt. Essentially, it transforms the single hit that a Kinsect does into a focused multi-hit. It'll aim the location first and then do sort of a figure eight and hit the monster four more times. It's beautiful damage and it's very target specific. I, I really enjoy this one. Like you guys have no idea. It's, it's really fun to use. Now a fair warning here. The first hit was what determines the location of the next four. However, this location is not monster specific. That's the main thing. It is rather spatial specific, meaning that if the monster moves from that specific spot, the Kinsect will not follow the monster, but rather it will do its figure eights in that exact spot in space and you'll pretty much be missing the monster. So make sure that you know when you use this that the monster will not be moving for another three seconds. Now, in terms of skill, we're looking at the second switch skill here. I paired this initially with the Tetra Seal build and it worked out really well in terms of timing. Most of the time when you finish the Tetra Seal uh, combo, your Kinsect will be ready and you can launch it straight into the monster right where you finish your combo while you reposition. So you can move while the Kinsect does damage, recall, and then jump right back into your next combo, Tetra Seal, and then launch the Kinsect to do the charge chain attack once again. 
Now, while the timing is great with the Tetra Seal, I do believe that you can get higher overall DPS pairing this Kinsect with the Tornado Slash, simply because it has a less of an animation lock and thus you can launch the Kinsect almost as soon as it's ready between attacks or like after a combo DPS. The Tornado Slash also has a faster combo, so you can get your Kinsects off much quicker and overall entire hunt get a lot more Kinsect damage. The greater flexibility of this Tornado Slash makes it so much easier to use especially for fast moving monsters. What I've also noticed is that the blunt effect on Kinsex with blunt type seem to have a higher effect compared to the Kinsect assist type. Now quite honestly this could be because the Kinsect assist does damage on the outside of your blade so only one or two shots hit the target that you're targeting. Whereas the charged chain attack the Kinsect will focus on that one spot. So if you're aiming for the head it'll hit the head ideally with all five shots and then you'll get more blunt damage on the head compared to the assist Kinsect. So typically I love to run blunt kinsects mainly because my playstyle is that I have a blade I can sever the tail on my own that's my playstyle. However the charge chain attack this actually buffs the sever kinsects quite well if you can target the tail with the kinsect this is huge damage that you can get to get decently close to severing that tail on your own. So for early game guys if you're looking to cut the tail specifically for parts this kinsect makes it much much easier. Finally here we reach the final new Kinsect which is the Powdered Kinsects and these are essentially the same ones from Monster Hunter World. You mark the monster and it'll fly off and boop the monster a couple of times dealing some damage but more importantly it leaves behind status clouds which vary based on the Kinsect. The green ones heal you, purple will poison the monster, yellow adds para status to the monster and orange does blast damage. So for those of you who are new these aren't instant statuses by the way. Similar to all status effects in the game, they sort of build up and once they reach a threshold, your monster is temporarily afflicted with the status. So since this Kinsect focuses on status, don't expect a lot of damage, it's much lower DPS and adds a bit of complexity that you have to watch the Kinsect stamina and mark the monster every few minutes. In Rise, I don't think this is particularly good for any ground based Insect Glaive gameplay. I believe the new Kinsects are much better for ground based and the cloud statuses aren't really necessary. My recommendation though for this is that if you're going full aerial style insect glaive, this is very handy. Aerial style in Rise is actually way better than in World, the DPS has been buffed, wire bugs basically make this game more aerial oriented, and aerial attacks now have charge levels. Now this is something I will go more in depth in my full insect glaive guide, I'm still testing a little bit here and there, but essentially what we're seeing is that the multi hits in the air boost the damage of aerial attack every time you do a jumping slash or helicopter move as we call it up to three times. That also includes the diving wyvern move. Additionally if you are doing a more aerial glaive focus to be honest you can't even use the effects of the other kinsects so your only choice is powder. So yeah you don't really have a choice. They have balances a bit some of the kinsects now come with dual powder so you get twice the effects while in the air. I do prefer the ones with the heals and poison since it's damaging the monster and healing yourself. Aerial also tends to be a little bit more risky so it's nice to have those heal clouds in the air. Plus the bonus with this Kinsect is that it's an auto attack frequency up which really helps and I think there's a lot of clouds after that that really make it worthwhile. Other Kinsect bonuses that come with the powder includes the idle stamina recovery which is also good for aerial glaive. Idle will help because you eventually have to land to recover your own stamina. The Kinsect should be fully charged by then and you can launch it right back in and just jump into your next aerial combo. I think the final bonus here is that there is a slowed stamina use bonus paired with a poison or paralysis powders at the moment. This may be helpful on some monsters with higher resistance, right? Slowed stamina basically means more powders which basically means more affliction. So alternatively you could also use this on lower resistance monsters and just affect them more. So really up to your decision how you want to play it. And that's about it for the Kinsect so far that we've seen in Rise guys. I do expect Capcom to maybe add some more in the title update releases. We've only seen up to rarity 4 so I do expect more to be released. And that's about it for the new Kinsects ladies and gentlemen. I hope this helps you get an idea of these new Kinsects and a possibility of where to use them. Again there are a lot of different ways to play Insect Glaive in Rise compared to World. So let me know in the comments if you're using another combination of skills and Kinsects that I didn't mention. There's no single right way to play Insect Glaive so be sure to test out what you like, what fits your playstyle and then work on improving those skills and I'm sure before you know it you'll be a master Insect Glaive hunter. As always my friends, stay safe, be happy, and keep hunting. Scott Sensei is out.